Good afternoon. My name is Nastako. I am an environmentalist. And nature, and, uh, nature is my life's passion. I am from Cameroon, but the story is complicated because La Republic happened. The roots of this goes the root of this go back to when Cameroon was divided as spoiled between imperial powers. By the end of World War I, Cameroon was divided between France and Britain, and from the British zone called the Southern Cameroons. The UN took responsibility to transition us from the British administration to independence. However, one day in 1961, we woke up being part of La Republic, French Cameroon. As a result, the government of French Cameroon was determined to suppress our identity. You could be arrested for speaking about Southern Cameroon. 23 years later, Cameroon's current dictator, Paul Bia, came to power. La Republic struck again. With the stroke of a pen, Paul, uh, Paul Bia removed the Anglophone community from the Constitution. Meanwhile, as I was growing up, I received important education <laughs> from my mother. She educated us about the importance of respecting human dignity. She taught us that discrimination is an illness. We should never allow it to infect us. She was an outspoken lady. I'm here today because of the education I received from her. Thank you, Mom. Because I'm in exile, I didn't have the time to grab my family photos. To become an environmentalist is not to sit in the classroom. Two major events pushed me to action. First, Prince Charles. In 1988, the Prince of Wales came to Cameroon to inaugurate the Corrupt National Park a rich biodiversity hotspot, home to endangered species like forest elephant and chimpanzee. The rainforest also provides vital goods and services to local communities. However, the mangrove ecosystem south of the park, which is vital for sea turtles, dolphins, and other species, was neglected. In fact, the mangrove was under attack from multinational oil drilling companies and fishermen from Niger Nigeria. Add to that an increase in pollution due to population expansion render water passing through my town undrinkable. Cases of skin infection were rampant. In 1995, I realized that if no one speaks for my environment, it will be destroyed. So I founded the N my NGO, Struggle to Economize Future Environment, SEFE. -E. In, but, in but in 2009, Heraclius Farm, a New York based company, sought to develop 280 square miles commercial oil palms, plantation in the midst of our, of our four protected areas, including the iconic Corum National Park. Palm is used for products such as margarine, soap, and biofuel, and it represents a $20 billion industry. Heracles, through its funding of scientists and researchers, got them to write reports to justify land grab. The reports firstly 
alleged that the plantation site was highly deforested and degraded area. Heracle leased land from government at dirty cheap price, half a dollar per hectare. By comparison, the same land in Francophone Cameroon would, value at, would be valued at 20%, $20 per hectare. Even the value of land in Anglophone region reflects discrimination. Heracles promised investors profits from sustainable agriculture and impactful investment in local economic development. They never expected any kind of opposition, especially not in this area. When I started campaigning against Heracles Farm, I never knew Greenpeace, the Auckland Institute, or Green. I had my community behind me and my belief and my belief of doing the right thing. And I had my bike to travel to remote communities. It was very difficult work to engage community in painful, honest discussion to convince them that job, schools, health clinic, roads, electricity, and water that Heracles promised that Heracles promised were not worth the value of their forests. Despite all the sugar quoted promises from Heracles, the community still opposed the project by demonstration, protests, petitions, and lawsuits. This was dangerous and hard work. Just take a look. The video. NASACO is one of the project's fiercest opponents. He's openly at war with its supporters and fears that allowing a foreign firm to monopolize the forest will come at a high price. His positions earned him some enemies. Who stop you? You, you, you fly camera for me. You gotta have a slap. Okay, I've seen this. I've seen the flight. I am warning him not to walk in my village. Never to walk in my village. And presently, no matter what everything you people do, I'm the chief of this village. It is always like this. That is um, the confrontation which we face uh, daily to protect rainforest. Shortly after this, I was ambushed by employees of Heracles. They attempted to drag me to the bush and strangulate me. I was never afraid. Heracles tried everything to stop my. Thank you. Thank you. Heracles tried everything to stop my campaign with the backing of the government. I was offered money, but I refused. They sued me in cuts. In 2015, I was sentenced three years in prison on charges of defaming their business. In 2016, I received a two-year suspended prison sentence on charges of unlawful assembly. I received death threats from unknown individual. Despite all the odds, Heracle did not succeed. With community mobilization, demonstration protests, and pressure from international NGO, the government of Cameroon ordered Heracle to cease operation in 2013. The company abandoned all operation in 2015, and we won. In 2016, people in my communities in Anglophone Cameroon revolted against decades of neglect by La République. They marched peacefully, but the government ignored their demands and unleashed security crackdown. Security forces carried out killings and arrested dozens of protesters. La République also shut down internet in Anglophone regions for three months twice. I could not communicate with the outside world or report what was happening on the ground. I criticized the use of 
disproportionate force against unarmed protesters and internet shutdown. In September 2017, the government forces came to my office. They took away my phone, laptop, camera, and document. I was taken to prison 200 kilometers away from my home and thrown into a two-meter square cell with 40 to 50 persons. I got sick in prison, but I was denied access to hospital. By the time they took me to see a military judge, I had been there for a week. My family did not know where I was. I looked disheveled. The charges was, I looked disheveled and was charged with terrorism. The charge was later changed to attempted insurrection. Because of pressure at home and abroad, the government released me. But according to, according to the, but, but according, according to the court order, the charges could be revived any time. Yes, the court order. In fact, my presentation here today could make me be rearrested. In November 2017, La Republic declared war on Southern Cameroons. Today, as I speak with tears, over 100 villages and towns have been burned. Many people killed. Thousands of people have been displaced in the bushes and over and other have been and other have become refugees in Nigeria. Friends, Southern Cameroon was a child bright that the British Empire pushed in, pushed in a forced marriage with the Republic du Cameroon back in 1961. The, this disaster is playing out right now. It's playing out right now in the form of total oppression of my Anglophone community. Some marriage concerning is in order. The UN should carry out a union review of this unhappy marriage before it's too late. Citizens of the world, be you in tech, be you in conservation, be you in media, we need your help to bring peace to my area and to protect our forests and ecosystem because the future of the entire planet depends on their survival. Thank you.